away from this model. Those I put down, put them down as political because they take away a constituency from the political movement who say we should do everything to establish as much as an Islamic concept in our way of life, but they're activists, but they're activists in telling people not to take part in politics. So they're different from compliance. And then we have the jihadi Safiri. The jihadi Safiri are those who believe in burning the system, they believe that all system is corrupt, uh, those who take part in politics, the Irish and Western world, or, or in the Islamic world, in any sort of democracy, uh, you know, they're, they're kafirs, they're very easily, quickly labeled as kafirs, and basically want to destroy everything and want to create a new form of fresh. And then we have those as well. Then we have the evolutionary groups. Uh, and the evolutionary groups, these are the Islamists, mainly in the Arab world, uh, equine movement, maybe especially in uh, Egypt rather than Jordan, fit into this, a group which believes that we use this existing political system and use that rather than create any division, <coughs> so you create an evolutionary system and work through that, but not losing the promise of Islamic thought and ideas. And we have the revolutionary groups who believe that you have to fight for what you believe in, and if it is necessary, arms, arms are necessary, then arms have to be taken. Uh, if it is not necessary, then you have to create a system in which you try to implement Islamic principles. So these are the six political signs. So within the Islamic community, as I mentioned, it, you might want to add a few more, but I think it's a reasonably comprehensive way of looking at the Islamic community as a Islamic community. Now, both the communities, unfortunately, in, in the political arena, have tried to create the other. Now, the global war on terror, which I believe is still carrying on under the new guide using the tariff rather than the state, uh, means that the Western world in, in particular has tried to create the other, and the other, unfortunately, from the Western perspective, is the uncivilized. They are the barbarians. Because they want to have faith. Now, to, to a Western mind, those people who want to have faith today, and they had realized in the 15th century that faith has been a burden to humanity, must be out of faith. But they cannot be civilized, they're uncivilized. And therefore they have the values, and the others don't have the values. So they're basically now legitimizing using force on the other. Once you create the other within the psyche of a human being, or within the psyche of a society, it then legitimizes to do whatever you like to so the war of propaganda pre the battlefield is more important than the battle itself. Hence, the propaganda war that was taken by our government during the Iraq war in Afghan was not very good because millions of people marched to the streets of London, most of them, I might say, non Muslims, uh, who did not accept the British government's view that they should go and occupy Iraq. Yet the idea to create the other was there, and the other was the political Islam as well, irrespective of what other ideas are, but that is what we must. But also the Islam is the same, particularly the Tafsiri, if you look at the Tafsiri view, that they also do the very, very same thing, that they have created the Kufar, you know, it is legitimate to what, whatever you like with the Kufar. You know, we are right, they are wrong, and since we are right, we can do whatever we like with the wrong. So, so this parallel ideology in the Islamic world as well. The difference is, of course, that we have political leaders of the superpower world and the global state who are creating the other in the Islamic world, whereas we have fringe groups on the Islamic side who consider the others as the other. And, and hence there's a great disparity which we should lose perspective of. So these two disparities exist, uh, and, and the idea of the other exists in both. Hence, I already mentioned this, once you, you create the other, then the violence becomes legitimate. Now, the Western world's violence is very interesting. That the Western world's violence is legitimate, that once you have a nationhood state, you give that person a uniform, or certain groups of people within that nationhood state a uniform, they go and kill somebody, they come back, they're not bound by any laws to be brought in front of court of law. A soldier cannot be charged who has been sent by the leader to a war. He can bring the leader to, to charge, but not the soldier. It's not the soldier who's committed the crime. 
This is because the Western concept has legitimized violence through the creation of, of, of an army. Now there's a problem here that, that is emerging in the Islamic world that the non-state actors, such as Hamas, such as Hezbollah, such as uh, the Taliban, who do not have a state, yet they want to defend themselves. And we can agree or disagree whether they have legitimacy or not. But for them, in, in philosophical idea, we need to discuss this. They want to defend themselves, but if they defend themselves through force, then they're terrorists. Because they don't have a nation state and they're not in a nation. Hence, you see this ideal that has been created by the Western world, parameters set by them, has alienated a group of people who want to become independent. And hence, you have a problem, you have a tension within the global society. The other problem is that a nation state can go to the United Nations and ask for a resolution to go and occupy a country, but the people cannot do that because they are not given that avenue. So Hamas, or, or people in Palestine, forget Hamas as a political organization, but people of Palestine who are under occupation cannot demand a UN resolution of protection. Another state can do it on its behalf, but the people of Palestine can't because it's not a nation state. So we have a group of people who are denied the instrument, the very instrument this world has created to safeguard humanity. And this tension is real, it exists today. And this dichotomy that has been created in this world needs to be addressed very, very rapidly. And you can see where the particular Islamists are considered as rebel rights. Because they say things now on promises that, excuse me, you've created a global world order, but this is a global world order for the Western world. This is a white man's club. You know, this is what happened in America in the 1950s and 40s, that the university chancellors had only be white, no black person was allowed in. And when a black person was allowed, when he wasn't allowed to vote. So you created the United Nations for humanity, yet you have a sixth permanent member state. Who decided on the sixth permanent member state? Why is the people who are oppressed don't have a nation cannot represent themselves? So, so you have this major problem uh, of the instruments that have been created. Remember, the Muslim community represents 20% of the global population. When you have 20% of the global population not represented on global instruments, then I think there's something wrong with Muslim institutions. It doesn't mean we destroy them, but we need to modify them so that they represent the global, the global population. I've just touched on this already, that the Islamist view on violence, again, the whole idea that it's one-sided, it cannot, it cannot accept the violence that has been espoused by the West, that they have legitimacy, whereas the Islamists don't have legitimacy. And this needs to be questioned, and it needs to be challenged. Now, fears of the West. There is fears in the West, and there are legitimate fears. The first is the whole idea that when you have a society, when you have a country, or you have the whole global movement, that has taken faith out from its calculation, from its thoughts, from its ideals, to create a secular state, to divorce faith completely. It's not a pluralist state, but a secular state, secular state. And here are a group of people who are saying, no, we need faith in, in our life. We need faith in politics. How can you square the circle? And, and this fear is real because of the history of Western world. Because of the history of nearly a thousand years of the church's oppression upon the European. And it was necessary for the world, for the Western world to go for a 30-year war, kill a third of its population, to create a nation state, an emancipate itself. And now, after another thousand years, this group of people are saying, now let's bring faith back in. They can't reconcile that. And this is one of the reasons why the Western world now, in particular, has become so antagonistic to Muslim women wearing the hijab vis-à-vis -vis the nuns wearing a cloth over their head. The reason the people in the West, or those who have the Western concept, are not perturbed or disturbed from a nun wearing a cloth in the public arena, because it is politically accepted that she has accepted politically 